Hello, this is David Abonic Turtle continuing a CFA Level 1 review financial statement analysis. Within that, we're looking at ratios. In the previous video, we looked at common activity ratios. And here I'd like to briefly consider the common liquidity ratios, which are listed right here. And they measure a firm's ability to meet its short-term obligations. I'd like to focus your attention on short-term because short-term helps us understand the difference between liquidity and solvency. We can view liquidity problems as an issue of timing or a temporary problem, and we can view solvency as an issue of long-term obligations or a long-run problem. And so it's possible to have a company that is illiquid but solvent in the sense that it has a net worth or positive equity, so they're fine in the long run, but they can't pay the bills today. Conversely, it's possible for the company to be liquid but insolvent in the sense that they've got the cash to pay bills today, current expenses, but in the long run, they have a negative net worth, they're insolvent. So short term is liquidity, long term is solvency. That's the first point I wanted to make, and the second one is that unlike with the activity ratios where we're mixing balance sheet and income statement accounts, here with the liquidity ratios, we're pretty much just dividing a balance sheet account into another balance sheet account. And so we only have the point in time measures. So instead of average accounts, we can use year end. So in the case of the current ratio, we can use current assets at the end of the period or end of the year. And in the case of current liability, similarly, end of the quarter, end of the year, it's a balance sheet to a balance sheet account. And you'll notice that in all three of these first ones we look at, they're going to have the same denominator, current liabilities, in the sense that we want to be conservative about those current liabilities. Those are generally going to be liabilities that are due in the next year. So with that current, ash, current ratio, we get current assets divided by current liabilities. And we're going to include in current assets, all assets expected to convert into cash in one year generally. So that's cash, short-term market investments, and these items which are not currently cash but are current assets, receivables, and inventory. So for example, if the company has 150,000 in current assets and current liabilities of 100,000, then we can say the current ratio is 1.5. You'll notice it's pretty much a unitless, and a high ratio would indicate greater ability to meet short-term obligations. A low ratio indicates less liquidity. And keep in mind that it's depending, this ratio is making an assumption that receivables and inventory can be converted into cash. And that might be a dubious assumption. The quick ratio then should be lower as we start to reduce the numerator. But notice here we're keeping the new denominator the same. So that's memory tip here if you're studying for the exam. These liquidity ratios have all in the same denominator current liabilities. But now with the quick ratio, as opposed to the current ratio, we're going to make a more conservative assumption about the current assets that can be converted into cash. So it's basically how close are we to cash? Now we're still going to include cash, short-term market marketable investments. Probably we're going to include receivables. So technically that's going to be the CFA definition, although I have seen that. Uh, ratio defined without receivables, and you can see why, because it's not really cash. But we're defining these as near nearest to cash, but notice here the primary difference, we're excluding inventory. That's a current asset, but we're not going to include inventory in the quick ratio. So in this case, quick assets might be 120,000, same current liabilities of 100,000, and we're going to get a quick ratio of 1.2. And then we're going to zoom in even further with an even more conservative ratio. And this is the really the ratio that would stress test the company for a crisis situation. What if it had to pay it bill, pay its bills with, with only cash or marketable securities or investments that were, that could be readily converted into cash? So with a cash ratio, we have cash and equivalents in the numerator, same denominator of current liabilities. And now that there's no reason to get any less conservative with the denominator. So now we've got cash and short-term marketable investments, and we could have 50,000 in cash and equivalents divided by the same current liabilities of 100,000, give us a cash ratio of 0.5. 
Can we judge that in isolation? No, it's hard to do that. As with most of these ratios, we want to compare it first against the company's own history, and second of all, benchmarked against good, a good set of peers. And again, this would be used in crisis situation, would not be useful in normal business situations. And it's worth noting that short-term market investments, so we're assuming those can be converted at their fair market value, probably their mark to market. Although notice, even that's an assumption. And the defensive inter interval ratio answers the question, how long can the company pay its, pay its expenditures from existing liquid assets? So we have the defensive interval ratio, which is going to have the quick assets in the numerator, same numerator that we had with the quick ratio. And so that's going to include cash, short-term marketable investments, and we're going to include the receivables, assume they can be converted into cash. And the denominator, we're going to have daily cash expenses. So you can see that by dividing the quick assets into daily cash expense, it gives us an estimate of how many days the company can go if it just uses the quick assets to cover its daily expenses. So in the case of our hypothetical example, 120,000 in quick assets, and let's say the daily cash expenses of the company were 5,000, then we've got an estimate that this company could continue to pay its operating expenses for about 24 days before running out of quick assets. And finally, this was in the previous video, but I want to include it just to be complete. Cash conversion cycle, notice technically not a ratio, but that cash conversion cycle does give us a sense of the working capital of the company, and we're going to take days on hand inventory, also known as days inventory outstanding, plus days sales outstanding, and notice these first two are uses of cash. The company's cash is tied up in inventory and tied up in receivables until it comes, until those are paid. So both of those are uses of cash. And then the company has as a source of cash. It can extend the length of time it, um, it, from when it receives invoices to paying its own vendors. So it's a subtraction there because that's a source of cash. So days on hand inventory plus days sales outstanding minus days payable outstanding gives us cash conversion cycle. The length of the time from cash is paid into the operation and used to make the operation from when it's ultimately received. Here's an example of that from the previous video. So that's a quick look at the uh, liquidity ratios. This is David of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.